Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby and have ourselves a drink. All right. And with Michaela singing, that means we are back in lobby bar for the week of August the 19th, 2024. Brian and Michaela here with you. And Michaela, we are carrying along with the Domain de Canton uh, month. I feel like we're getting our mileage uh, out of this very delicious liqueur this month. And, you know, the summer, it, it's still coming. It's still hot, but it's cooling down a little bit, right? So we're seeing a, a little dip in the temperatures. So it's time, I think, to bring the Domain de Canton game uh, to, to a little bit of a darker level today with some dark rum. And I think you have something really good in mind for everyone. Yes. Uh, this is amazing. Um I do feel like uh, we're making a really good dent into my Domain de Canton bottle, but this thing, I this might be the reason to buy a Domain de Canton uh, for like good, because this drink oh, is amazing. Okay. It's called a Canton Breeze, um, and it's super simple. It is like the perfect lobby bar drink because you need three things. You need some dark rum, you need some Domain de Canton, and you need some pineapple juice. Now, Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need it to be pineapple juice. If you have like mango or just like a tropical breeze punch, you could do something like that and it would be amazing. And it's mm -hmm. one ounce mm -hmm. each, one ounce of dark rum, an ounce of the Domain de Canton, an ounce of the pineapple juice. You, you can mix it, you can put it in a shaker and mix it, or you could add it directly into a glass and just stir it and enjoy it. It is super simple. It is super delicious. It is really, really beautiful. I loved this drink. Uh, you showed me this yesterday and i made mm -hmm. one i took a picture of it and then i drank the rest of them well i drank <laughs> a lot of them the rest of them. okay yeah fair enough fair enough yeah i had a i had a sneaking suspicion that you might be uh, up for an extra cocktail you know last night you know you got your uh sunday uh grumpies going on so you gotta you gotta get a cocktail in there right to to make you forget about the monday uh upcoming so i sent this your way and i said this sounds pretty good we'll do it for the lobby bar uh tomorrow and yeah you made one up took a picture uh you'll see that on the social medias there um and you can uh sip and enjoy this it is a perfect lobby bar Cocktail, Michaela. Like you said, three ingredients. That's good. Equal parts. That's good. You don't even have to remember anything. Dark rum, Domaine Decanton, and pineapple juice. Easy breezy. Um, uh, just like just like the name would imply, the Canton breeze. So I uh, definitely try one yeah. of these up. I've been having a lot of fun doing these Domaine Decanton uh, cocktails for this month. Right? It's kind of fun to to play around with the ingredients and uh, learn some new techniques and learn some you know easy recipes, but also some some good recipes. Because you know, like like we said when we started to do this for the month, you know, sometimes you get a bottle of something, you use it like one off for like a yeah. like a party or something, and then you're stuck with it. Um, so this you know it's broadening our horizons on what we can uh, use this for, and maybe giving us some more. Uh, uh, you know, inspiration for future cocktails uh, to have. Michaela, we need to talk about a little film. It's called Alien Romulus. We haven't seen it yet. Uh, apparently, a lot of people saw it here this opening weekend, $41.5 million. I'm hearing pretty good things. I'm hearing that it's real scary, uh, which is good. It's good good for all of those uh, people out there. And I'm not a, like a big horror uh, movie fan, but I do make the exception for the Alien franchise. It's a franchise uh, that I really love. Um, it's a franchise, you know, that, that goes back through like our whole lives, right? So uh, we talked even about the first Alien in the very first year of Drink the Movies. And we're going to be talking about Alien uh, Romulus a little bit because you and I are... are we are trying our best to get out to see it. Uh, hopefully that happens very soon. A lot of people did see it. What are you hearing about Alien Romulus, Michaela? Are you going to be able to survive the alien attacks? I don't think I'm going to be able to survive the alien attacks. So I've heard that... <laughs> I've heard that it is much more terrifying than action-y, uh, okay. which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. mm -hmm. the, the coolest thing about the Alien franchise in general is it, it's it been able to do both, right? So Alien, which we've covered, um, is like the original, like super scary monster, right? I mean, it yeah, is- Yeah, it's like a slasher it, film. It yeah. is, it is- horribly terrifying, right? Like you, you, you're on the ship, you don't know what's going on. Um, you don't know where it is, but it's this thing that grows from like the size of a thimble to like the size of a, you know, VW Beetle. Um, it can fit anywhere. It's completely in, it, you can't see it. It's got blood made of acid. I mean, it is literally one of the most terrifying things that you could think of, right? And <laughs> yeah. And then we move from there to like Aliens and then like, you know, more of the Aliens franchise and then like mm -hmm. Alien versus Predator and all of these, which are much more action-y than they are scary. They're scary right. for mm -hmm. sure because yep. it's still something that can kill you. 
but it's not the horror filmy thing that you felt when in the first one right and that's Mm -hmm. kind of the the beautiful thing about ridley scott is he was able to like get get back there because apparently this one is actually really terrifying it's got some action in it but it it these things now fly i don't understand that because they don't seem to have wings but if the previews are any uh indication i i'm you really want me to see this in the theater with you probably just for the entertainment value of me watching it in the theater because i'm gonna scream like a little girl uh yes. like yeah. like little miss muffet with a giant spider next to her only it's not a spider it's a spider that lands eggs in your face Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right it's a it's a face hugger uh it is uh, gonna come and get you it we're gonna see it uh we're gonna set on opposite sides of the uh of the theater no doubt so uh, when we see it but yeah 41 and a half million dollars uh pretty good pretty good opening weekend uh there for the very horror adjacent uh alien romulus uh we've got deadpool and wolverine finally uh knocked off the top spot there at 29 million dollars it ends with us twisters and the re-release of Coraline pulls in a very uh good showing there 8.3 million dollars so uh good job Coraline. Uh, if you had a chance to get out to see that um michaela we need to go see alien romulus of course there's been so many things this month that we've you know intended to go out and see we haven't done any of those yet but we are going to be going to see something uh here this week because we're going to be talking about it uh, on the podcast maybe we're gonna have to see two things to talk about on the podcast but let's start here michaela we've got a new movie new movie coming out it is called blink twice uh this is directed by zoe kravitz this is her directorial uh debut it's kind of like this um kind of like this psychological thriller like mystery uh kind of thing it looks like it looks pretty good the cast is looking very uh star-studded here naomi aki and channing tatum but then we've also got you know Aliyah shockett uh, christian slater Haley joel osmond uh, even Gina Davis, Kyle McLaughlin, you know, all the all the big hitters are in this one. This one looks pretty good. And I'm interested wow. to see how Zoe does uh, with their first m- film. Have you done uh, any research on this one, Michaela? Do you know anything about Blink Twice? What do you think? Do not do not know anything about uh, Blink Twice, but it has uh, Christian Slater, who is uh, one of my favorite actors of all time. Uh, he's mm. been my favorite mm-hmm. since he was in The Legend of Billie Jean uh, with his not sister, uh, not cousin Helen Slater. Um <laughs> But I love everything he touches. He does a really good job of playing like every man, but also like, like being this casually sensitive person. So I, I just, I, I just love all of his stuff and I'm glad that he's really coming back into the spotlight. Um, He did um, some really cool work in the season two of Dirty John. Um, He was amazing in that. And so I'm really glad that he's kind of back in the spotlight, getting some, getting some love. Um, No, I have no idea. Uh, Zoe Kravitz, uh, this is going to be amazing though. I mean, she is like a star star. So she knows what good looks like. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what she does. Yeah, that's right. So uh, Blink Twice, we got that coming this week. I've also got a uh, a re-release, you know, film back for its 70th anniversary. Might be the uh, oldest one of these uh, we've ever covered here on Drink the Movies. But Rear Window is going to be uh, back in the theaters to celebrate that anniversary. Uh, We're going to be talking about it here on the podcast this week. So maybe we can make it out to see it. Um, It would be amazing to see it on like a modern day uh, movie screen because like the movie screen would be as wide as the set that they built. Uh, for right. the show right you'd like see like the whole courtyard uh there and that that's gonna look amazing i think they're gonna have like that color on full blast it's gonna look really really cool uh so we're gonna be talking about rear window uh this week and then we've got the new uh version of the crow michaela we talked about the old crow uh, over on patreon patreon.com slash drink the movies uh we had a chat about that one you know the brandon lee of it all but uh got the new crow coming out uh we're going to be going to see that to cover it on the podcast here in two weeks so you're looking forward for the retelling of eric draven his revenge tale or love yes. tale, love story. I don't know. One of those. I mean, it really depends on how well, on, on where, where they decide to go with it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. This it, it was such a poignant story uh, and very, very adults, very violent uh, as a, as a child when we watched it, right. When it came out in the nineties, it, it's going to mm-hmm. be really mm-hmm. interesting. I, I have such high hopes for it. I really hope it doesn't let me down. Uh, it's basically, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be it looks like it's going to be even darker, even more gritty. Less less emo, more more grit. It's what it looks like from the mm. trailers. Mm-hmm. Um and I yeah. have purposely not done a lot of research because I didn't want to be um you know dissuaded one way or another or kind of taught how to feel about it before I go in and see it. So, I've got my I've got my open mind ready to be happy. And I'm really hoping it doesn't let me down. 
yes yeah absolutely i'm definitely looking forward to this uh just watching the uh little trailer that's playing on imdb right now it looks like there is a lot less rain um and a little bit more uh of that love story which we talked about uh wanting a little bit more of in uh you know the the patreon exclusive there so if you want to hear our thoughts on the original crow go check that out at patreon again it's patreon.com slash uh drink the movies and then stay tuned because we're going to be talking about the new crow here in just a couple weeks when we uh get the chance to go see that when it debuts uh you know this weekend coming out um okay look coming to your tv set so you've got inside out 2 that's coming to a video on demand it's not available on disney plus uh yet so if you're waiting uh for that you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer but you can uh rent it at home now uh starting this week so that'll be good if you haven't had a chance to see that so we've got a couple of new seasons of things coming i'm not super familiar uh with either of these um season three of that 90s show is going to be on netflix uh you know i watched that 70s show and that was you know on television but that 90s show is uh there on netflix a lot of people seem to really like it so if that's your jam i got that coming out this week and we've got season two of pachinko which is a very highly regarded uh uh TV show on Apple TV Plus uh, about this, uh, you know, kind of the generations of uh, Korean family. Uh, that's going to be uh, really good. It's got really good reviews, so I might have to uh, check that out. Go back to the start, watch season one of that, and then catch up on season two of Pachinko. Did you watch that 70s show, Michaela? You weren't like a huge TV watcher when no. that was on. I guess that was like in our college days, I guess, is when that was on, kind of. Yeah, Does that sound right? a lot of my friends. Yeah, yeah, it was late 90s, early 2000s, I feel like, because I, I had some friends in high school that I seem to remember really loved it um, and their parents loved it because it was like, that's how they grew up. And I, it's mm -hmm. fine. It's happened to us. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that um, because the seventies are as far away from the nineties as the nineties are from us. Ooh. Yeah. True story. Yeah. And I don't like that. I don't like that. Old, and I don't we're like the, it. We're the old uh, people now nope. that like that 70s show. So yeah, never mind. Don't watch that that 90s show. Get rid of that. Get rid of that for sure. So uh that is going to wrap it up for this week in the lobby bar, Michaela. Last week we talked about Stargate uh on the episode. This week, as I mentioned, we we're talking uh rear window and go check out Patreon. We did our hangout last week. That was a lot of fun. Uh albeit a little technologically <laughs> confounding uh, at times, but we made it through, had a really good time. Uh, we've got the crow on there now, so stay tuned for more fun on the Patreon. We appreciate appreciate everyone over there so much. We appreciate everyone uh, who takes a moment to leave us a review on the podcast feed that you're listening to this right now. We appreciate that. And we'll feature those um, if you leave us a review. So go do that. And uh, Michaela, let's grab the Domain to Canton. We've got one more week to get another cocktail out of this bottle and then it's sayonara and on to the next. So let's do that. And we'll talk to everyone next time in the lobby bar.